Oh yeah. Now this is some just, easy listening. It's just a calming podcast. Just a calming podcast. <laughs> it's just a podcast for people who like jazz. <laughs> A new demographic. I've been everyone. thinking about remarketing us as yeah. a jazz cast. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. There aren't enough of them in the world. There's not <laughs> enough jazz musicians in the world. That's not that's not true. And hmm? that's not true. There's not enough jazz musicians? No, there's plenty of them. Okay. Then our podcast for jazz musicians will go over perfectly. <laughs> and it'll just be 45 uninterrupted minutes of scatting. Oh, I love it. Have you ever scatted at full volume and tried your hardest? Oh, and tr- I tried what? And actually tried to hmm. scat. I've tried. I can't in all honesty sta- say I've tried my hardest, though. So. I'll try, like, give give me, like, 50% now. The problem is that if I scat, it always comes out as take five. What's take five? <laughs> what am I listening to right now? Why are you still doing it? <laughs> what? Okay, that's enough. What is that? What up? What up? Okay, what? What? what is this? Is this it's an old a, band you were in? <laughs> it's a famous jazz song written in five four timing. Oh, which is very rare. Yeah. Oh, it's actually quite interesting. I'd love to talk it's, about it's it more. It's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not, more about it. <laughs> it's not very <laughs> common for a 5-4 jazz song, so if you do it, just allow me to scat it again it's and for you to really common. pay attention to the tempo. <laughs> it's not very common for any song of any genre, I'll have you know, especially a jazz song. I know more about jazz than people may think. <laughs> right, and that's because of your dad is like super it's, into... I was raised in a jazz household. Your dad is one, player, of, yes. is one of the cats in that one scene of the Aristocats. <laughs> where they're all just jazzing in the it would it's it's that scene where everybody wants building. to be a cat yeah oh yeah with the yeah. incredibly racist little part in it oh, yeah <laughs> i'd like you to recite that part if you will <laughs> i shan't <laughs> please i shan't do it no not even for money <laughs> uh welcome to all the space between my name's mitch my name is Billy. Welcome to our little podcast. Scatting is the uh, is the is the foolproof scapegoat that I use when I'm too sleepy to do a bit. <laughs> yeah. Be- well. Yeah. You are sleepy today. Uh, I stayed up to like five or six a.m. last night, right? It was gone six, I think. It was yeah. past six, and I was still yeah. on the phone with you. It was my fault. Why did you allow? Why did you allow me to do that? I didn't even know we had a podcast the next day. And then I woke up. <laughs> the first thing I thought is, "Oh fuck, we have to record today." I'm so tired, and I'm a little anxious. <laughs> I was also I was very tired while I was talking to you as well. I hadn't had much sleep either, so that's my excuse. Okay, well, I also forgot that we had a podcast because I'm so sleepy. I'm going to allow you to read the two questions. I will read only a one short question, but we're going to try and get to three questions on yes. uh, this episode. We're going to see if we could actually do it within within the time frame without going over. Mm-hmm. So that's um, the challenge. That's the fun part. So this is a this is a podcast where we uh, give advice and read emails, uh, usually about um, you know pissing, pee pee, or um, <laughs> urine. And things of the like. But we don't forget that one. What? We. We what? Oh, we. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. I am so tired. I'm so sleepy. We, we huh? We who? Huh? You got me. You tricked me. I didn't even mean to. We don't we don't say we here. We don't say we we, we had a bit of a we. We definitely say that here. Hmm. Yeah. When's the last time you went we? Hmm, about two and a half hours ago. Wow, pretty yeah. good. How many? Something like that. How often would you say you piss a day? This is a personal question. Uh huh. Because it's like really high. <laughs> I keep it's it's high enough that I like keep on googling to check the symptoms of diabetes. <laughs> like I do that like how, about once a month. How much know? do I have to pee in order for for me for, to get my blood tested? Worried. Yeah, yeah, because I am constantly worried. So. Really. You pee more than four times a day? Uh, I don't know. I don't really count. But Get out of some, here. I count. I don't know. <laughs> you count how many times I go? Yeah, four to five times. Okay. That sounds about right. I believe you. I keep yeah. a little tally. 
Um, <laughs> I was thinking recently too. It's like with all of the um, with all the people that we get saying like. Uh, uh, you're my favorite shit and piss podcast. I love this shit and piss podcast. I was yeah. like, how did we devolve into that? Because I was listening to some of our earlier episodes and I was like, these episodes are more fun. And we did have like one early episode where we're like, uh-oh, we kind of talk about some some bodily fluids in this one, guys. We're sorry. And then we just mm-hmm. we just went from there and never stopped. But yeah. is that our fault? Because we only read the questions we're given. We do. And we're not, I have to stress, we're not like heavily curating them to skew that way no no they're the just, vast it, majority of them the your we, the listeners are 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 writing in and they are yes. creating the podcast that they want to hear and they want to hear a shit and piss podcast we opened the door an inch and they just they just the force of mm-hmm. it just slammed it wide open yeah the but, people can simply not wait to confess this stuff apparently f- our inbox is full of it fortunately we're gonna avoid that this episode we are. <laughs> we're not going to talk about it at all, and we're just going to see how people feel about that. We're going to go a cool little opening question. We're going to go a uh, kind of a silly question, and then we're going to go kind of an art question at the end. So if mm-hmm. you'll allow me, I'm going to jump right into it. Go for it. The first email is called, No Pickle, Just a Drawing for You Guys. Mm-hmm. To Billy and Mitch, I'm writing to say how much I appreciate the show. Listening to you guys ramble has helped me laugh through the tough few months. I'm currently studying illustration and thought I'd share some art I made for the show. Uh, I only gave you guys little micro smiles as to not ruin your emo rep. I hope you like it. Thanks so much for making me laugh and thanks for the art talk. Love from Ontario, Canada, and we usually don't say a name, but I'm going to give this person a shout out so I hope they don't mind. Holly. Holly. And you can follow them on Instagram. It is at Halsey. It's, oh my God, Halsey wrote us a fucking email. (laughs) Holly drew us. Halsey drew us. Fuck. (laughs) Hall C spelled H-O-L-L-C-E-E. Again, H-O-L-L-C-E-E on IG. Go ahead and follow them. P.S. I like the scat jazz intros and uh, really work. What, what am I saying? I Oh, that's right. I think the scat jazz... I'm so fucking sleepy. <laughs> P.S. I think the scat jazz intros are really working, and you should definitely keep it up. Well, Holly, we scatted. Thank you for the support. And we jazzed. For us scatting. Yeah. So for the people watching on uh, YouTube, which is, which is usually just a uh, looping uh, footage, uh, beautiful footage that I take right here, I'm going to include the drawing. Look at now, us. This is a surprisingly beautiful drawing. Yeah, I could tell that yeah. they're like studying illustration. This is a beautiful mm-hmm. illustration of the two of us. Yeah, it's I genuinely love it. Like I I was like, fuck, if we if we wanted to appear like a proper podcast, we could use this as our cover art. Most podcasts have <laughs> like a thing like this where they're like, hey, it's Mid, it's Mitch and Billy, Billy and Mitch and then it's like mm-hmm. the two of them drawn in like a kooky style, you know? Yeah. This is not this is this is this is not any. This is much better than most people's. It is, yeah. It's, it's, it's this not, is waking me like up cute. right now. I can't believe how cute I look. Well, they nailed so many things here. Yes. And for the people, what and if 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 you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I suggest that you go to YouTube.com/slash all the space in between and listen to this episode and just skip to this part just so you can see this. Mm-hmm. Um, they got your piercings right. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> and your makeup and your eyebrows and your your hair, even though it's like shaved, it kind of parts there in the middle and it they does nailed that have a too. Parting, even though it's shaved, it is embarrassing. Yeah. Now for me, I'd like to talk about my bone structure here. Oh, it's sharp. It's you got it's the strong. jawline that can mm-hmm. cut through a Christmas ham. <laughs> and they absolutely nailed that. They got my little beauty mark. And more yeah, than they anything, did. they got my fat ear. <laughs> they did get your, your weird, fat, tiny baby ear. I do it's have small, one but it's fat, and it's very round. fat ear. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's, uh, they absolutely nailed that. I will say they also nailed your, like, tired-looking eyes. I do have tired eyes. Yeah. And a beautifully sharp jawline. Yeah. And I do have an extremely round, round head. Round head. Yeah, you really, they, they really got yeah. that. And your chin is shaped like that, too. It is. This is, this is like... It's so perfect because no, it doesn't. It doesn't look like a photo of us, but it looks like an interpretation of us. Yes, that's very it's stylized. accurate. I love it, Holly. I'm going to put it on our wedding invitation. You nailed it. You absolutely <laughs> nailed it. It's so good. Thank you so much for sending this in. This we is... were so so like genuinely 
blown away when we opened it. We we're like, whoa, this is really good. <laughs> I like the background. I like the mountains. I like the I like the, I like color, the color scheme. scheme. I like yes. that we're both drowning in piss. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like all of it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you a lot. Thank Isn't you so me? much, Holly. Again, that is mm-hmm. um and and I feel like we're kind of opening the floodgates here. Um, but uh whatever. If anyone else wants to draw us, give it a go. <laughs> I think this is our first, not not our first fan art of us. Uh, separately but maybe no. the first together this might be our first fan art no yeah. no we've had people draw us on like the radio show and stuff all the time hmm yeah, but not for the podcast not for the podcast this is our first podcast fan yeah. art of us because we've seen podcast fan art in the past yeah and really good ones too mm-hmm. yeah but this was this was cool to get to get in the old inbox thank you very much this is this, beautiful we we this beautiful we festive love, gift that you've bestowed upon us we love showing it off and uh mm-hmm. i look forward to seeing more possibly if anyone wants to take a stab at drawing us <laughs> though i don't think you'll do better than holly <laughs> so bear that in mind <laughs> keep that in mind the next time you're just putting yep. pen to paper trying <laughs> to be inspired anyway moving on uh, actual email Yes, actual email, but a nice little way to start our show. Thank you. Okay, our next email is, I was going to say, it is from Bull. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're using names, fuck it, mask off. No one's anonymous. They're like, you should have told us that. You should have made that, that perfectly clear. It very personal it's problems. no longer an anonymous podcast now that we've said this person's Instagram. <laughs> no, it is, and I won't, shan't be saying this person's name. But the subject line is, sexy story scribes silly snag. And it goes, Hey you two, I have no money. I do, however, have a basic understanding of the English language. I'm in my third year of college, university for Billy, and while I'm very busy, I sometimes have a little time in the evening without anything to do. Lately, I've been trying to pick up writing as a new hobby, because, I, but because I have ADHD, I can't get more than 25 pages or so without having a new, cooler idea, which lent, leads me to scrap that project and move on. I hate getting 25 pages into something. That's something that <sighs> yeah. happens to me a lot. I'll just scribble 25 pages. Yeah. You know. You know when you hit that 25 page um, <laughs> That 25 slump. page mark. Yeah. yeah. I hate when I experience sort of a, you know, I'll get the first one-tenth of an entire book out and then i yeah and then i kind of fall i've, I've never written 25 pages of anything <laughs> i think i have but like for, for, co- my for college or something right yeah not just casually no. <laughs> never casually written 25 Fuck. pages of anything i could barely I get know. out a poem this person is a prodigy and a, and a genius a genius yes yeah okay like, go oh, i can't really get more than 25 pages like 25 god i can't get more than 25 lines <laughs> I struggled to write a newsletter that's one page. You know why I do fragments of poetry? They're fucking short. Yeah, they're really short. I love writing four lines and calling it a night. This person's writing 25 pages and then typing this email. <laughs> Jesus. You, how do you not run out of words at this point? I know. All right. Anyway, they carry on. I won't go into too much detail, but one of my close friends has started using her own extra time to start working as a stripper. She's enjoying herself, and I'm super proud of her for her confidence, but I can't help but feel a little left out. Unlike her, I don't look like a model, and my anxiety skyrockets from just thinking about being seen by other people. I mentioned this to her, and she suggested that I try my hand at writing erotica. (laughs) I can make a little money from writing short stories, and, given how weird the internet is, it doesn't matter what I write, it'll find its niche. I like this idea, and I want to give it a try, but I have a big problem. How do I come up with a pen name? If I use my real name, my family wouldn't be too happy. Plus, it doesn't seem catchy enough. My name doesn't scream, I write adult stories. Please help me, I don't even know where to start. Thanks, this person's name. Hmm. P.S. Thank you for everything you two make, whether it's music, photography, writing, or a podcast, you bring me comfort on bad days. Thank you so much for saying that. That's very, thank you for writing it. Mm-hmm. Oh right. yeah, this person's name doesn't scream, I write adult stories. I do have to agree with yeah. that. Can you oh, believe God. that? <laughs> Look at that. No. I mean, their yeah, email is their their email is <laughs> at gmail dot com. So I can't believe you're doing that. This. That's that's more. I don't know. Maybe just use that one, but don't use your actual name, which is <laughs> because yeah. that doesn't scream. I write adult stories. No, it would be funny if you changed it to something like different, but equally not. Equally normal sounding, you know. Yeah. Rebecca. 
or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm even going to bleep out the because, <laughs> <laughs> because it's too similar. <laughs> It's not similar in, in like it like hardly even shares letters, but they're both like <laughs> I know what you're pulling from for inspiration. I, I don't want. I was doing a bit there and I think that you were now we're flying too close to the sun. Okay. <laughs> I gotta do a lot of fucking editing now. It's gonna be a lot of beeping around around this section. I'm so sorry. I really annoy people when they hear that boop just constantly. Yeah. Uh, but no, looking at this person's name, no, it does not scream I write adult stories. No. But let's talk about adult stories really quickly before we start to think of any c- cool names for this person. Yeah. You think we should – we can give their initials, right? That's how they signed it. It is. Their yeah. initial is KF. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kentucky Fried. <laughs> That's the- <laughs> Kung Fu. <laughs> Kinky <laughs> Friend. <laughs> We're already going into the ideas. <laughs> Kung Fu is really funny for an erotic. Kennedy <coughs> F J. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, I'll go anywhere with these with these initials. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. When it comes to adult stories, I feel like there's this first of all, uh I I think it's kind of a funny response to say, Well, my friend has become a stripper. Mm-hmm. And I'm kinda I feel left out. And it's like, oh, okay. So you want to become a stripper? No. No, no, no. Oh. (laughs) Well, then why do you feel left out? Because I want to do some other sex-related shit. It's like the the two things, writing adult stories and being a stripper couldn't be further from one another. They're very, very far away They're two vastly different things. They are, yeah. They both kind of are loosely related to sex. Yes. Yeah. But uh, other than that, uh, no, they're not really the same thing. But if that's – because I, I I, I, don't think it's fair to say that people who are strippers are using that to kind of like express themselves sexually. No. Some of them might be. Maybe that's not, some. You know, yeah. I'd but, say you the know, vast majority. It's work. <laughs> it, is, yeah. it, is, it is still work. But then at the same time, mm-hmm. this person – actually, maybe it's more similar than I'm uh, – then I'm initially thinking because this person doesn't seem like they 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 enjoy writing erotica. They kind of just, just want to like, do it. I can it. make a little money, I, I can make and a I can money. and I can write whatever kind right. of thing. So yeah, yeah. There's the there's where you stumble next. You won't mm-hmm. make any money on writing oh, erotica. That's gonna be hard. It's a very it'd be yeah. very difficult for you unless you actually built up a name. You can't just be someone that says I'm brand new to the scene and I'm writing erotica and pay me mm-hmm. money for it. Considering. There's mm-hmm. a lot. There's a lot of people doing it for free. There are. There are entire websites dedicated to people doing there's it. There's an for endless free. amount of and websites. And they write just novels. <laughs> they, they write so much, and they're doing it out of yeah. passion. They're getting off to this shit. You could tell. They're hard <laughs> as a rock when they're when they're when they're typing this stuff, and they're and it's you know so they kind of have their heart in it. Yeah. And that said, I do know people who like have a uh, like. I want to say Patreons, but maybe that's not allowed. But <laughs> Patreon type things, or maybe a Ko-Fi or something, uh, where they write erotica, but they're kind of known. They've already within, built a name. Yeah, they, for they themselves. were like they were like a sex blogger, or they were a, you know that they, they, they're around. They're in a community of people who are like into that kind of thing. I think it's very hard to just come out of nowhere and be like. Hey, anyone want this kind of thing? Yeah, it's extremely difficult. Um, And that's also – I feel that it's a common misconception with people who want to get into any type of – even just sex work adjacent uh, things is that mm -hmm. they see it as something that they can do and they can make quick money off of. And in most cases, that won't happen. It's it's, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it's hard hard work building a fan base, building a client base out of a fan base. Trying to make people pay money for stuff, it's all it's all, it's all hard things. It's so hard <laughs> yeah. to get anybody to pay money for anything, especially th- when things are sex related. Yeah. Sex related or art related. <laughs> uh-huh. Both of those things. It's it's you have to you have to squeeze the money from them and just pl- yeah. and it's so and then you have to be really stern about it. And then in order for those people not to tell you to be like to just be like, well then fuck off. I don't want it anyway. Um the you have to actually have like a fan base. And that takes mm-hmm. time. So I think that's your biggest obstacle there, not just the name. 
Mm-hmm. Which is not to mm-hmm. say that I that I discourage you giving this a shot. I want you to give this a shot. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, it's not like, you know, selling something on eBay. Right. If you're doing it you for know? the money, I think you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. If you're doing but, it because you want But if you, you think wanna, it'll be fun, yeah, then... Yeah, it might be super fun. It might. Yeah. And, and if you think that it'll be worth your time, you know, making links in that kind of community, then then go for that also. Yeah. And then you, you know, can build a name cool. within that community within your little fake mm-hmm. name, Kentucky Fried. <laughs> I kind of like Kentucky Fried. <laughs> what's uh what's your favorite like uh erotic l- uh, literature website to peruse I, uh, as a as a youngin? Uh Literotica. Literotica is a classic. Yeah. It's vast. We're just making it really hard for this person want. to make a career because we're just like, now if you want f- the free shit, <laughs> uh, so literotica, solo touch, uh yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit out there. <laughs> I used to read so much shit like that. But if, what's interesting about those websites is that, like, a lot of it was written in, like, the, like, late 90s, early 2000s. And yes, it's still just and there, it's still taking there. Still up there. server space. And you can, yeah. you can, you, and the you website can, hasn't really changed. You can tell <laughs> when you stumble mm-hmm. across something and you're like, all right, I'm going to try and get into this. And it was, like, written 1998, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you could just tell by, like, the things that they're referencing. I'm like, uh oh. Yes. Um, or sometimes they'll be it's like, cool. it's like an artifact. <laughs> it's kind of beautiful. Yeah. It's kind of very cool. And, um, I, I remember being like 16 years old and having to like look through ones that were like at very least written by an American because it really threw me uh, off when I was like reading something and then like someone would refer to somebody's dick as a prick. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is barbaric this is childish this is this is of- offensive actually <laughs> hey this is actually gross <laughs> that's so funny would you <laughs> would you have like been really turned off if i started doing that yes <laughs> well no actually now that i'm thinking about it now that i'm older no no <laughs> no i want you to start doing actually. that actually <laughs> fine fair Start, start calling it your Richard. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. Calling it my little <laughs> my little Johnson. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes you would just like stumble across ones that would just use like terminology like that. You're like, okay, this is written by somebody who in 1998 is of retiring age. <laughs> yeah, is old. <laughs> yeah, is an old person mm-hmm. who's dead now <laughs> and from Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And she's and a relic. She's going to help me come. Yeah. <laughs> she's going she's gonna to do it. God bless her soul. From beyond yeah. the grave. Mm-hmm. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is actually kind of cool. Yeah. But that is, you know, that is fuck all to do with this email. Um, you, you, uh, I wish you luck in doing this thing if it's something that you would like to do. Uh, the expectation might be a little bit high. Mm-hmm. Uh, your friend has the privilege of like... When you work as a stripper, you... you, you, you <laughs> Careful you, what you say here about having privilege. <laughs> now, the privilege of a stripper. <laughs> Strippers need to check their privilege, I think. <laughs> it's not going into a horrible run. <laughs> so, um, what were you going to say? <laughs> has the... Uh, not the privilege, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we'll see financial benefit from it uh, much sooner, is what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in probably. actual dollars being given mm-hmm. given to her. Yeah, uh, it's much much harder to um, sell erotic literature. Yeah. It is. Yeah, the infrastructure is not there. Mm-mm. We need a Spotify for erotic literature. I we need a Spotify for everything. Most that things. Isn't music. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. we have those things for th- like with movies and stuff. That's yeah, with movies, that's true. We need one for the things that I do. Right. Is what I'm saying. Erotic yeah. literature. No. <laughs> you wrote this email. <laughs> Kung Fu Please. is you. I need a, su- a pseudonym. Mm. Pseudonym? We've done this before on the podcast and I still can't remember. A pseudonym. Okay, good. Yeah, that one. My pseudonym's gonna be Sue the Nim. <laughs> Sue is a really hot name. <laughs> it doesn't sound like someone's aunt from 
from the 90s. No, that's Sue. Of course. Ooh, <laughs> Sue. What's your partner's name? Sue. Oh. Sue. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Is she your aunt? <laughs> Is your partner also your aunt? Does she double as your aunt? <laughs> Answer the aunt? fucking question. <laughs> Who is Susan to you? We're... <laughs> I've got I've got Susan sleeping in the other room right now. Do you? Yeah. Hmm. Like that's her actual name, but they don't go by Sue. No, of course not. And she'd kill me if she ever heard me saying that. Well, she's gonna hear this episode eventually and be like, "Oh my yeah. god." No, her name's Susanna, but she goes by Uzi. <laughs> stop, stop telling everything about your friends on this show. <laughs> like what their name is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out them. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm getting leg cramp. Okay. Time for time for the next email. I've got leg cramp. Okay, go for it. Okay. Um this one is called actually this one's got no subject at all. So let's get into it. It goes. Hello, Michelangelo and Pagliacci. Nice. First off, I'd like to begin with a compliment. Thank you for making this podcast. I enjoy your banter and it brings me joy driving in the dreary October snow. Uh-oh. We are answering this a little late. Look, guys, it's the holidays. We only got like three emails this this, <laughs> this week. So we, so we dipped into the back catalog. We did. Finally. Yeah. And good for this person that we did. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Anyway, they go on. Now, for my current gherkin which I like, Tiny Pickle. That, yeah. I was catching up on episodes, and I knew I had to write in with this inquiry right after Mitch had said this. No one around me understood why I was making art in my time instead of working part-time at Domino's. Pause, pause it. I didn't say that. Didn't I don't think that. that's verbatim. No. no. What I no. did, what I did, I said something similar, though. I said that um, the people in my life would constantly tell me that I could be making more mm-hmm. working at Domino's part-time than mm-hmm. I am with my art. They were saying that to belittle my art and to and to say, you know, why are you spending so much time on this when it's not even paying you? You could be making more working at a pizza shop, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which is more what I was saying. It wasn't me questioning why aren't I working at Domino's instead. Mm-hmm. But just a, just a slight correction. Yeah. It's close, we, but it's not I'm quite not, there. I, I make you go back into the back catalog and copy and paste the audio of exactly what you said. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to find it. Did they even <laughs> reference an episode uh, number? No. I'm no. Not, no, I'm not going to find it. Okay, go on. But, yeah, something along those lines. I write in because I find myself at the exact other end of that idea. Working part-time at Domino's. Hey. But more specifically, I am at a loss for when I have the time for art or what I have to do to make the time. My schedule is busy. Work, college, general courses, and having nearly no extra time slash energy to spend on crafting the things I love. It feels that there's a balanced scale that I can never quite keep equal. All the advice on how to start making art has inspired much creative energy in me, but I feel like I am unable to spend it. I've had the spare time to make art that I am proud of in many years past, but just this year, my spare time has been cut drastically, and the lack of time I have now compared to then has gotten me in a rut. Mm. My question is this. Are my priorities in order, or am I an absolute buffoon for not finding a way to cut down my schedule to fit the needs for my pen and paper? Although art is patient and will always wait for you, is simply not having enough space in the day for it, neglecting it altogether? I hope that wasn't too vague, and I wish you both all the best. Cheers! dragon emoji all right so yes okay this email was written as soon as i was off my shift so i hope it doesn't read like it's been written at 4 a.m filled by caffeinated cola it does read like you'd smell like pizza <laughs> and it's delicious like you smell like a delicious domino's pizza you know domino's offers a gluten-free crust oh they do, do they really now they do, do offer they... a gluten-free crust all right do they offer a vegan cheese they do not yet offer a vegan cheese but they have... when will someone i to remember both reading diets? on brand eating that mm-hmm. they are testing a vegan cheese a while back and whether or not they implemented it in stores or tested it in anything near my area is beyond me. Hey, this reader, get back to us. Mm-hmm. When they're we'll wait. Vegan. We'll answer your question after you <laughs> can, tell us. Can you get the inside scoop on uh-huh. when they're going to solve When are they going to have Dea is? cheese at <laughs> Domino's? I want a gluten-free crust with Dea cheese. <laughs> they're like, at that point, you just don't want a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at that point, just at that eat at point, home. 
Yeah, just put something else. You have, have those around. ingredients at home. <laughs> Why are you spending fifteen dollars here? <laughs> I would like to say uh, this person is not a buffoon for uh, not finding time. They they are they are uh, experiencing this uh, very difficult thing that you experience when you get older that mm-hmm. um, a lot of people are experiencing in their twenties, and that's that they're like, okay, I haven't yet fully pursued pursued art, and I still want to do that with my life, but I have a fucking mm-hmm. job, and that's difficult. That's yeah. really really difficult. It is worth mentioning that yes, I, I was in the I was in the grips of agoraphobia at the time, and my life was very difficult in its own way. When I was fully pursuing flat sound, and I mean recording, I clung to you and sleep and all of those things. I didn't have a job. I was mm-hmm. I I was I was dealing with a lot of other things, but I I didn't have a job that I went to or anything like that. I was in my early twenties, and I just went for this thing, and yeah. uh, it ended up working. Uh, and I put a lot of work into that, especially when I needed to start making money. I, I was like, all right, how do I monetize this thing? And it ended up working. But mm-hmm. I can only empathize from a distance how it must feel to have to go to work, clock in, put hours into that job, come home, and then find the ambition at the end of it all or on on your like one or two days off you have a week to mm. – to create art, which is which which is which is a really difficult and tiresome thing to do. It is. That makes it way harder. It's not just yes. about making art at that point. It's about finding time to make art. Mm-hmm. So um do you have anything to say about that before I jump into another little uh, rant about it? Um f- well I've not had much c- like classical workplace boss place of work mm-hmm. type employment. Yeah. You know, most of my jobs have been freelance or self-employed or kind of make your own schedule type thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I you go go into your next thing. Okay, uh, it's it's mm-hmm. it's just like the way that I see it, and this is the only advice that I could actually give if they're looking for real advice is that <clears throat> you need to start replacing the art with some of the uh, leisurely things that you do that you have it in you to cut out. And I don't mean like, you know, uh, eating uh, enough and getting Mm. enough sleep or things like that. I mean like uh, at the end of each day, I know that you're you're tired and I know that you probably just want to lay in bed and check your phone or watch a movie or anything like that. But when you Mm -hmm. truly enjoy – this thing that you're chasing after, um, that becomes just as fun as scrolling through social media or uh, watching a movie or doing anything like that. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be like this giant recording session or this big thing that makes you super tired. You can just spend one hour a day um, mm-hmm. writing in the same way that you would spend probably a couple hours a day uh, scrolling through social media or mm-hmm. doing something on the computer or on your phone or watching YouTube or anything like that. If you start slowly cutting out those things that aren't essential – and you're willing to replace mm-hmm. them with uh, just working a little bit on your art, um, then I think that you'll see some benefit from that because uh, much like – I mean I can draw a parallel of, of like that and like working on yourself in therapy or you know doing anything like that. That isn't necessarily fun for me to do but I mm-hmm. find time to do it because I know that every hour I invest into that, I'm getting back. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, so that's, a, that's a good way to put it. Even mm-hmm. even if it's kind of slow burning and uh, you're not seeing this huge thing all at once, um, mm-hmm. I do believe that any time that you invest into art, even if it's just like, I don't know, you wrote a poem at the end of the day or you worked on a bit of writing or you thought of a few lines or you started to like learn an instrument a little bit more instead of mm-hmm. instead of anything, instead of, instead of like reading or checking social media or watching a movie or doing anything like that um, – Mm-hmm. At the end of your day, you're going to see something back from that. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I get my advice would be similar, which is that, like, I feel like there's a lot. Of, I don't want to get on one of the, these kind of, uh, oh, nowadays, old man shaking yeah, yeah, yeah. clouds kind of tangent. But but it's way different now. Yeah, there is there we don't give ourselves generally much time to just be alone with our thoughts and art is essentially just being alone with your thoughts kind of thing. Right. Um you know, it's like, you know, any kind of extra minutes that you have you just kind of automatically take your phone out and it's like, well, what's going on kind of thing. Um and my my good tip, which is something that I've been doing this month, is to actually use that like obscure feature on your on your iPhone that is like the uh, it's like a a par- parental timer lock. Basically. Oh yeah, you have been doing that, huh? And it's so good. 
It's so good because it's just slapping myself on the wrist. After like one hour of social media, it's like, okay, you've had enough for the day now. Right. There's nothing more you can gain from looking at social uh-uh. media. You, you've seen the important meme <sighs> if you've been on there for an hour, you know? Uh, any more time than it's time that you are spending and you're not going to get any investment back on. You are not gaining anything mm-hmm. back from it. So it's like from there, it's like, okay, well, instead of spending another hour on social media which is easier done than you think when you've got the little timer thing on there and it's telling you that you've gone over um you know you can spend that even that just one hour doing something else right you know and just just giving yourself that time to just zone into your own thing and this person doesn't say what kind of art they do i don't think they just say art and they mention pen and paper kind of thing Uh so it's uh it's a bit different according to what you do like um you know because for me it's like oh if i need to edit photographs and that can be very relaxing and i can do it while i'm listening to music right kind of thing. yeah and you just like you just get into a rhythm of it after a while and like you can even kind of not entirely pay attention to it mm-hmm. <laughs> almost you just you're just doing it and uh <clears throat> i don't know if you're if you're someone who draws then you can be doing you know uh your life drawing practice you know while you're listening to a a podcast or you know there's a tv on in the background Mm -hmm. or whatever but you know you can find a way to get it into your free time that feels relaxing right you know and doesn't feel like a chore that you've got to squeeze in because art is work but it is also nice and creative usually Mm -hmm. in in some part you know and also cathartic and yeah there's 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 a lot of beautiful benefit to art and yeah i think Mm -hmm. you bring up a really good point where it completely depends on what they're doing like if if when i'm writing whether Mm -hmm. it be a song or a poem or anything like that i'm just writing in general i can't have a podcast on in the background well yeah if i'm shooting photographs Mm -hmm. and like that has to be all i'm doing but there's other parts of the process you know so yeah um yeah. can you not shoot a photograph uh, when there's like music on in the background i guess so if you're working like in a studio or something then yeah yeah or like couldn't you wear something couldn't you wear like headphones and shoot you know because like i'm thinking like when you have to like say something verbally or record oh, yeah. something audibly then you can't you have, have something yeah silence, yeah right? then you have yeah. to be completely dedicated to that thing but i always kind of considered like photography you can do the two of those things can't you you can I think just I don't. You don't. I, yeah. I concentrate quite hard. Mm-hmm. But, um, but that's just my own brain. You know, I'm sure other people do. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Especially if you're, yeah, because they mentioned like pen and paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They could be writing. But if you're illustrating, yeah, you could definitely mix the two at once. You can have like a leisurely experience while drawing and stuff. But to me, like mm-hmm. writing poetry and writing and stuff like that, uh, you know, especially a song or rather like recording anything, that's not that leisurely to me. Writing is yeah. pretty leisurely. Practicing is pretty leisurely. Recording is is hell. Hard, uh, yeah. <laughs> is really difficult and takes a lot out of me. Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, depending on the type of uh, art they're doing, I think that's a great point. It, it could be totally different for them. But mm-hmm. you need to find little pockets in the day where you can do that and you need to start to shave off the other stuff that don't really matter. And let me tell you, social media doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it just does not matter. And I think I I credit that to probably why I can even live off of my stuff now because it, people have so much distraction now. I'm like creating less art than I was back in 2012 because back in 2012, it's like, yeah, I had a Tumblr. I had things Mm -hmm. like that, you know, but I, that was all like about my work. I was posting so much about my own shit. I was posting new poetry that I would write for my Tumblr. And I would yeah. I would make new songs and post them to my Tumblr. And then I would respond mm-hmm. to questions on there all the time to keep it – to to keep myself um, kind of uh, in contact with these people that liked my work and stuff. It was all centric around flat sound uh, yeah. most of the time. And I feel like social media is so catered to just being this – passive thing now where we just scroll through and we don't do a lot of thinking and you can post something and try and be funny and maybe it'll blow up and maybe you can uh promote something underneath it when it does but then that won't even really do anything Mm -hmm. uh it's not helping you and back when we didn't have all this stuff we didn't have like you know this fancy smartphone in our pocket that allowed us to just scroll whenever and be on the internet all the time in a second um Mm -hmm. all you really could do with your spare time was shit like you know watch a movie or read or make art and a lot of us chose to make art (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh so it is more difficult now 
Yeah. It's more definitely. difficult than ever now. So you really have yeah. to... Um, there are companies just at, just employing people to invest into algorithms to d- make you start your, your attention. More. Yeah, yeah, for for as long as possible, and it's working to, to get them ad money. And of course, it works because they're very smart people uh-huh. doing it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's super difficult, but it's just yeah, it's like you have if you gather all the shit social media time in your day, you're like, oh, there's a there's definitely a bit here I could be doing something totally. better with maybe and i fall Mm -hmm. into that i've fallen into that so many times where it's like now that that you know it's it's not the same on uh you know having a tumblr years and years ago was not is not you know like this thing that i couldn't even check from my phone i had to be on a computer to be on it Mm -hmm. um it's not the same as having like instagram on my phone as well as twitter as well as all this other shit you know um i'm much more distracted today than I was way back then. And I already like recorded those songs and did those albums back then. But it's it's like I have to actively be like, okay, don't go on these sites. Don't, don't, don't do these things. Don't post. Don't don't fall into it because it'll it'll consume you, you know? Mm-hmm. Um so I can't imagine how someone who like hasn't built a career off it yet and is starting from this place and having a job, mm-hmm. how do you focus? I don't know. It's difficult. <laughs> It's difficult. Yeah. And I think the acceptance is that it's harder now than ever and you have to put in the extra mile. I mean, you you know, this could work in your benefit. Lots of people out there, dude. Lots mm-hmm. of people out there are talking about making art and never making a single thing. That's like most people that I know yep. are just like, yeah, I'm an artist. Oh, when's the last time you did fucking anything? It's been two years or some shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Be a better artist than that. Be yeah. a more active artist than that. And you're already ahead of these people. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Th- there's an opportunity there for you to get a head start. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, you're definitely you are not a buffoon for having a job. People need to have no, jobs. That like, job is important. And there's yeah, also and, there's mm-hmm. also I want to reiterate for the people that didn't listen to the last episode. In no way am I just like, how you think I'd ever work at Domino's instead of being no. an artist or anything <laughs> like that. I I never meant that. And even when people were saying it to me, my reaction was, fuck you. There's nothing wrong with working at Domino's. Yeah, because uh, they're kind of saying it. They're not saying it in a kind of like, "Oh, well, buck up. You could be making more if you worked a dump." They're saying it in a shit way. They're saying they're, like, yes. "You could be making more doing what I consider to be a bad job." Yeah, kind of thing. When actually, it's like a, a job's a job, and people need jobs. A job's you know? a job, and it's paying yeah. you money. Yes, and like working at a pizza shop isn't a bad thing at all. People no. <laughs> go there, order pizza. You work there, make pizza. It's it's mm-hmm. a job, and it's yeah. I I I would never frown upon a job at Domino's, but any job that you have, whether it be it could be it could be anywhere. You could be working at a fast food place. You could be working at a you know doing retail somewhere. You could you could be fucking driving Uber to make your money. Um, mm-hmm. It's still going to take away from time that you could be working on art. So you have to mm-hmm. cut out the other stuff. You can't cut out the job and keep doing social media. That'd be dumb. You have to <laughs> look at your other stuff and say, okay, work is a necessity. But I want to mm-hmm. squeeze in art here somehow. How do I do that? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm spending these many hours doing these things. How do I cut down on that? And the um, the result of that might even be that you feel better because you're spending less time doing this stuff that is kind of a time sink, you know? It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of, kind of just a brain-numbing time sink. And when's the last time that we had a good meme anyway? No. Yeah. It's, been, it's been years. There's not <laughs> been a good meme since... <laughs> Fucking I can has cheeseburger. <laughs> Since lolcats. <laughs> lolcats were the last good meme. <laughs> you know what's funny though? Thinking back to lolcats and stuff. Lolcats. You know what's funny? Lol, I can has cheeseburger. <laughs> you know what's funny? The the ceiling cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what cracked me up? Catterday. That was <laughs> that was blessed. Um. What were you gonna say? What's funny is that even at the time during the peak of like. Uh, lolcats and stuff. I never found it mm. funny. I was never out loud laughing or even really interested or thinking that it was interesting at all. It, it was just a a thing the internet was doing. Like yep. I never watched a Numa Numa dance vid thing, um, lip sync, and thought like I need to show this to people. This is crazy. This is so funny. No. But I was into like the other subsect of internet humor, which was like uh, rage fucking... faces. <laughs> Stop! You no, were into I'm rage pre- faces. No, yeah. pre rage faces. Uh, Newgrounds. Oh yeah, I like Newgrounds. Yeah, I found Newgrounds very funny. Newgrounds was sick. 
Mm-hmm. Your grounds are still around. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I suppose so. Good for them. Yeah, people are still making uh, flash animations and things like that. I think I think it's really cool. I'm hoping that yeah. a lot of them that were really popular, you know, found uh, promising careers being animators or something cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so I didn't. There, there was some there was some good internet, some bad internet, right. as there is now. There's more bad internet There's now. So much more bad internet now because everybody's on the internet. We, we okay, we we, yeah. we 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 can't even start on this. I can I can I can have a whole separate podcast about why the internet is fucking ruined now and it's holding people <laughs> back. It's a plague. I talked to my therapist about this. I literally do. He says that like they have talks in the ADAA where they have seminars for younger people explaining to them why. Social media is not dangerous. It's just like bad for you. It's just bad for your brain on a physiological level. On a psychological yeah. level, it's bad for your brain. Mm. Mm. And they're teaching that in ADAA. Like it's just ugh, I'm I'm not at the point where I can just ignore it anymore. You know, it's it's bad. It's a it's a horrible horrible thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like be be on there if you need to be if you're some kind of public figure or something mm-hmm. or you're trying trying to be one, but if otherwise don't don't give it. You don't your have to contribute time. to it. Yeah. No. You don't have to do just, that. You can focus on your, your art. time into a machine that isn't giving anything out. Right. Yet. And they get yeah. paid for you looking at that phone. That's why they mm-hmm. want you to do it so much. That's why they're hiring these people to build these things to 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 you know the whole algorithm is set up so that you look at your phone more often. It's and it's because it's this it's it's just this trillion dollar fucking business. Yeah. And I don't mean like because I don't think it it's worthless communicating with people like. Text your friends. That's a good thing to do, you know? Communicating, though, is different than it it's was. It's different to just, yeah. Because this is another yeah. thing I talked to my therapist about is is, mm-hmm. is that um, s- part of the things that they teach in ADAA during these seminars that they give is that um, – Young people now are more depressed than they've ever been and it's because of this lack of communication because the only communication they know is this passive like liking tweets and uh, commenting vague stuff on an Instagram post or trying to be funny or trying to get the top comment or Mm. anything like that. But nobody's using their voice to talk to one another anymore. Nobody's having Mm. phone calls, even a phone call, a Skype call. I mean being in person is the best but even using your voice and just talking to someone on the phone, you get so much more connection with that person and so much more genuine human interaction than you do – via text, via a phone, via a comment, via, you know, something mm-hmm. like that. And that's affecting people's brains today. That's that's vastly interesting to me and it's really, really sad. It is. Time time for the second podcast. I'll start a, it. A sidecast. I really, yeah. I really, really will. I can talk and about it. And we'll this. get your therapist to guest on it. <laughs> he, he would do it in a second. I know. He loves me. He would do it in a yeah. second. Uh, <laughs> that being said, though, this has been All the Space in Between. My name is Mitch. My name is Billy. Thank you so much for listening to our episode. If you would like to write into us, because we do answer emails, uh, if you've got a little pickle for us, a little art question, a little funny story, a predicament, then you can do that at our email address, which is all the space in between at gmail.com. And if you'd like to listen to all of our previous episodes that we've done, this one, granted, was very mature of us. There was no milking <laughs> Santa Claus. There was no pissing the bed. There was no anything. I'm very proud of us. You know, occasionally we like to have episodes like this where we just talk art and yeah. um, have have a few laughs and actually just just bang out an honest to goodness podcast episode. Um, and it's funny too because the I'm not going to allow you to <laughs> to say the <laughs> to say the thing to say the website <laughs> even though funny. I know that you're waiting. Uh, it's 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 the. It's these episodes that people like will reference when when they're just like, I was listening to this episode and I had to write in because we were talking about art or something like that. And that makes me feel very mm-hmm. good. I like the balance of being uh, – I'm a multifaceted little guy. I like to talk that's, about – I mean that's very much how we are though. Pissing art, baby. That's, that's all We really I like having about. stupid, stupid conversations that make us laugh a lot until our stomachs hurt. And mm-hmm. we also like talking about – Art and stuff that matters. I love talking about art and stuff that matters. But if you'd like yeah. to listen to any of our previous episodes where we talk about stupid stuff and art that matters, uh, you can visit our website, which is allthespaceinbetween.com. Also, uh, check us out on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Uh, mm-hmm. beca- uh, follow us on Spotify. That's a thing that we can yes. that we can uh, proudly say now because our Spotify, again, it was fucked up for weeks. It was fucked up for a long time. It is back. We got our followers back. But if you're no longer a follower because you're following the duplicate account that was on there because Spotify fucked it up, just check us out on Spotify and hit the follow button, please. It really Mm – I don't know if it helps, but it helps me feel good. And if you really (laughs) want to help, you would tell your friends about the show or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. 
Yeah. Or well, both. Both is great. Or subscribe to the to the uh, YouTube channel or anything like that because uh, uh, sometimes we put up little images like this and it's a drawing of us. Look at that. <laughs> you got to put it back of in there. Of course I am. <laughs> of course I'll maybe love remember to, make to do work that. for yourself. <laughs> I'll maybe remember to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. There's uh, new episodes every Wednesday, Wednesday Tuesday. No, tu- no. Uh, Monday? Uh, no. That's the one. Monday. Wednesdays is when I have therapy. You got me talking yep. about Neil, and now I'm looking <laughs> now forward to I a nice, calming about. Wednesday therapy session. <laughs> new episodes every Monday. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.